for maybe the last four years in my business, I have scheduled a CEO date with myself every single week. And I try to make it as romantic as it sounds. Really, it's just a 90 minute non-negotiable time block in my calendar. I will review my past week. I will plan my week ahead, set myself up with three very intentional weekly targets. I'll also make sure that I'm tackling any issues that are arising in my business and put together a bit of an accountability checklist. Now, the goal behind this is to make sure that every action I am taking is in alignment with my vision, my annual goals, and my quarterly targets. As my friend Chris Brogan says, your day is your week, is your month, is your year. I don't know about you, but as a solo business owner, or even when I'm working with a small team, it's so easy to get caught up in the daily operations and forget to do these regular progress check-ins, making sure we're taking the time to deal with the issues that are arising and ensure we are working in alignment with where we want to be. How many times have you said, I'll get to that? Or I feel like a hamster on a wheel. Or how the heck is it December already? This is where CEO dates became such a game changer for me. And any time I do not carry them out, because there's been a couple times where I've just let it go to the side, I always end up in a dumpster fire. So they've become a crucial non-negotiable part of my weekly schedule. The biggest reason why is they allowed me to step out of that operator role, put my boss hat on and start thinking and making decisions as somebody who owns a business, not just a job. In fact, there's a great book that I highly recommend. One of my favorites is called Traction by Gino Wickman and it talks about this in a lot more detail and it includes its own templates for meetings as well. And it all ties back to knowing exactly what your role is in your business and the types of decisions you need to be making. So for me, when I started doing these CEO dates, suddenly standard operating procedures became a priority. Delegation was invited to the table. I started to see trends and I could ask myself questions like, is this the best use of my time, skills and resources? Is this project or action task in alignment with what I'm trying to achieve right now? And my personal favorite, what would this look like if it were easy? Now we all know this is important, but it's so easy to play ourselves with the, I'll get to that card. When it becomes non-negotiable, what gets measured, gets managed, gets mastered. So the way I implement this in my own business is I have a template set up with prompts. That was the result of asking that question, what would this look like if it were easy? And I have that set up in Notion. I've recently updated it and so I thought we could walk through it together. I have also included a free template to go alongside. There's a link in the description. The only caveat is that the template doesn't include all the databases that I have in my own account. But I have included spaces for you to write in your answers and I've also included where to add your databases if you have them set up in Notion. So let's go ahead and walk through it. Okay, so welcome to a template version of my Notion account. Basically the exact same without all of the personal information. And then over here we have the template that I've shared with you in the description. The only difference is this one only has a template for your CEO meetings. Whereas if we come over here, you'll see if I click the drop down next to new, I've got quarter and annual review and planning sessions too. Now, if you decide to stick around for the rest of the week, I will be sharing these with you so you can always add them into the template that I've shared with you. So what we're going to do is start with weekly review and planning. Now this is pulling in a lot of data here, so it can sometimes take a couple of seconds to populate. What I'm going to do is make this full view. I'm going to scoot me over here so I'm not in the way and we can go through the template. So again, I'm not having to put this in every week. It's just there for me. I don't have to think about it. I just come in here and answer the questions and make it as fun as possible. So I've got a welcome video here. You would put in a video if you're working with a team, this is helpful. But if not, you can just leave it blank, turn off devices, make sure this is focus time. 
Then I have three boxes for my three words of the year. This is a concept from Chris Brogan. If you go to chrisbrogan.com, you can learn all about it, but you set your intentions for the year. I'll come in here and I'll type these out before I get started. Then step one is to review my week. So I'll start by looking at my KPI scorecard. This is blank again because it's a template, but I've included an example of something you might want to track your sales. What you're tracking will be unique to you. Your key performance indicators will always be unique to your business and your goals. But what I do here is I've got this database and down the side, I've got the months and then I've linked this to my annual goals. So I have a database in Notion for my annual goals. And what I can do is I can just click through here and select the goals that I'm working on that month. So say in December, I'm working on my revenue. I could select that and it's just going to show me, okay, that's what I was working on. How did I perform up against that? Then we have quarter and then we have our year. And then along here, we've got 10 metrics. You can always add your own by clicking this plus icon and add in say a number, which is what these are all are. And what you can do, we close this out for this one, for example, sales, I've just changed the icon. It's a number, but I can go into edit property and I make sure this number format is US dollars. And what this allows me to do, say I just put in 10,000. What that will do is it's going to give me the average at the bottom, but I can change this out to sum if I want, and it will give me the sum of the year. And what's really nice about this is if I come up to these three dots, I can group by quarter. So if I group that by quarter, Suddenly I can see my performance over just a quarter and I can measure it against other quarters there as well. So I like having my KPI scorecard in Notion. It's not for everyone, but I find it to be really helpful. So I'll update that once a month, but I'll review it on a weekly basis. Then if we come into weekly overview, I've got my quarterly target. So again, I'm pulling in a database here and I can see what's on track, what's off track, what's complete. And these all have prompts in here as well, questions to help guide me. I've also got this target review and this is included in your template. So what's going well, what's not going well, what have you learned, what needs to be improved and what are your next steps? I'm filling that in every week. Then I'm looking at my projects and I've included one here just to show you. This is pulling in a projects database. Again, I've got some prompts. Very similar, what's going well, what's not, what have I learned, what needs to be improved on, what are my next action steps. I've got my action tasks in here and the only one I have in here is good morning tweet, which I have in fact put out a good morning tweet. So we're good. So that's marked as complete and I can see that's automatically going to show me because I filtered it to the status as complete. So I'm only seeing what I've done. I don't have to put any information in there. It's just going to show me everything. I've got some prompts here. So I would just type in how things are going. People I reached out to. So here I have a meetings database and all my meetings go in here. So I can see who I reached out to is going to show me. And then I have some prompts in here as well. Then I close off with my peaks and my pits, which are my accomplishments and disappointments. But peaks and pits sounds way more fun. I think he'll agree. So peaks, again, is pulling in this information automatically. I can view it by impact that I had. And then I've got some reflections. So what am I proud of accomplishing this week? What do I want to continue to do? What brought me the most joy? I think this is important. We don't celebrate our wins enough in business. And that gives me a little bit of time to say, good job. And let's continue to do more of that because it works. Pits are our disappointments or when you take an L. You would put that in here. I do have prompts with all of these too. So it's not a case of just adding it. I'll go in here and I'll fill it out and I'll fill out the prompts. And that can be really helpful as business lessons. So I don't really see it as a negative. I see it as a lesson and I want to learn from it. So then I have some reflections here as well. And that's my weekly review done. And because it's pulling in a lot of that data for me in Notion, it doesn't actually take me too long to go through that. A lot of it is just reflections. Step two is to address any key issues. So we want to plug up our leaky holes before they sink or ship. What I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll look at what quarterly targets are off track. So it's only going to show me the ones that are off track and then I can make adjustments. I can go ahead and resolve any issues. So I have a link to an issue list database here and it's going to show me them. I categorize them by 
quarter or monthly or weekly issues. So some things are not that big a deal in the context of the year. Like you don't need to be stressing out about it. But this week it's maybe a priority. So I'll put that in the weekly block. Again, we have some prompts and then a weekly operational reset. And these are just like things that we need to do to clean up, make sure that we're starting fresh. So once I've done that, we can mark these off. We've reviewed the week, addressed key issues. And then I can move on to planning next week. So I'll start with people. Here are the people I'm waiting on. Here are the people I need to reach out to. And here are all my meetings. So this is actually my action task database. I just have a filter on it where priority is meeting. So it's only going to show me, I have a filter in here to only show me meetings which I find to be really helpful. Then we have projects. So what am I working on next week? I'll have a view of all my projects. You'll see here, I've got that example in. I can also click here and see an overview of that. And then I have my priorities. So what are my top three targets for next week? What's on my not to do list? So this is a big one for me. Not very good at that, but I'm getting better. And then I can add my action tasks in here as well. So once I've planned my next week, my last step is my personal reflections. So I'll come in here and personal growth, it's going to show me my habit tracker that I have set up in Notion, courses and training that I've got, and these are just examples. And then my bookshelf as well, is going to show me all the books that I'm reading or currently reading or where I'm at. I can filter it based on my preference. So as you can see, I heavily use Notion for everything. If you are interested in this, by the way, with all the databases, just let me know in the comments. Growth reflections. So what did we like? What did we learn? And what did we long for? What would have made this week a lot smoother? And if I type that in there, hopefully I can do it next week. And then we have a summary and additional notes. So these are just little extras if you want to keep track. And then once I'm done, I come up here, change the status to complete. And I have now completed my CEO date. Time to have a nice glass of water or wine or a beer or a coffee or whatever your favorite drink is and celebrate the fact that you have taken the time to sit down and track your progress and make sure that you're working in alignment. Now, if you've never done this in your business before, even if you just do this for a month, I cannot tell you what a confidence booster it is. You just feel like you're on top of everything and you know that the actions you're taking have meaning and purpose. You're not running around thinking that you have 101 things to do. And it also helps you manage your calendar a little bit better in terms of time management. Now that part I haven't got down, I'm still overfilling my calendar, but at least I can see where I'm going wrong and I can fix it if I wasn't so stubborn. Now this is just how I do it. There's no right way. My goal in sharing this video is that you can take what's valuable, customize it, make it your own, and even hit me up in the comments and share what works for you. This is just one of three meetings that I carry out in my business. I also do quarterly and annual meetings. I'll be sharing those over the next couple of days. So if you want to stick around for that, be sure to hit subscribe, click the bell icon so you can be notified when I release those videos and sign up to my newsletter in the description. That way you can access all of the templates as I release them throughout this month. Thank you so much for being here. I'll meet you in the comments.